down for customers who've been impacted by the latest round of power shutoffs. So we got our last update about an hour ago, and as of that time... Oh no, not again. Let me show you what I do when the power goes off. Does your neighborhood sound like this? Or would you rather have this? Clean, silent energy that'll be around as long as we have sunshine. What's important to you when the power goes out? Okay, in about the last three months, PG&E's done seven of those power shutoffs. Um, instead of getting upset about it, I decided to build um, an emergency power system to run my home. Basically, I just ran the important things in the house, like my refrigerator, my stove, um, the heater, and my electronics, like my laptop. Uh, let me show you how I put it together, and, uh, and I was able to do it for around $1,000 and maybe a little bit less. The four main parts of the emergency power system are the input power, storage, output power, and transfer. That's switching between shore power and inverter power. I am building my brackets to go on the south side of my house. This is usually called racking. The bracket that I am building will adjust my panels from 55 degrees to 25 degrees tilt for winter and summer sun. Even though it's an emergency system, the panels will be in a pretty severe environment, so my racking will need to be tough. I have four 100 watt monocrystalline panels. There are three main types of panels, monocrystalline, polycrystalline, and amorphous. All the panels seem to have a 20 to 30 year lifespan. I will stick with the mono or polycrystalline because of the smaller mounting footprint. I can also charge my batteries using a generator or wind power. I ruled out the generator because of the noise and gas fumes and limited life and supply of fuel. We get very little wind in our area, so I believe that solar is my best bet. Here's the catch. My 400 watts of solar will only make 400 watts when they are pointed directly at the sun and it is a clear day. In the winter, I will get about 4 hours of usable sun per day. In the summer, I will get about 8 hours of sun per day. I consider this to be an emergency system, so while the power is on, I will use the solar power to charge my electric tractors that I use around the property. Now I can have my machines ready to use any time and I can have emergency power when needed. A good rule of thumb is to have about two days of battery storage for your home. Between my refrigerator, heater, devices, and lights, I use about 2,000 watts a day. I need to store about 4,000 watts. My 320 ampere hour battery system on my tractor holds a little over 4,000 watts. I have enough storage for two days. My solar input should bump me to three days. The best way to store electricity will be lead acid wet cell deep cycle batteries. The regulators will keep the solar from overcharging the batteries and it will tell me how much juice I have in the batteries. I plan on powering my refrigerator and heater, some lights and electronics. This will add up to about 500 watts. I have a 2000 to 4000 watt modified sine wave inverter. This type of inverter will run my appliances without any problem. If I had sensitive electronics, I would want to use a pure sine wave inverter. The transfers, which will hardwire into my power panel. Its job is to keep the PG&E power from mixing with my inverter power. The use of a transfer switch means no more cords through the windows and doors. One more thing to think about. If I use my solar system to run part of my house, let's say that it saved me $20 a month. Wouldn't this be the same as PG&E giving me $20 a month?